All right. The time has come. The first rankings from the college football committee will come out tonight. Um, be interesting to see how things fall out. I think it could be predictable. Um, the more interesting things probably going to be four, five, and six, uh, who they select to, you know, the, that positioning, um, you know, and then interesting one is where do you put the teams that haven't played as many games, uh, mainly just Ohio state, you know, only having four games in the books, um, be interesting to see where they put that. So, uh, before that stuff comes out, I figured we might as well, uh, have some predictions ourselves. So uh, we'll have two for you. We'll call it the wide side sports shitty playoff picks. Why don't we go with that? Because I'm sure they're going to be wrong. Um, the first one's going to come up. We'll, uh, we'll just dive right in. Uh, the first one's come from my uh, wide side sports podcast co-host, uh, Seth. So... Uh, We'll put up Seth's shitty picks right here. And at uh, number one, no surprise, he has Alabama. I think that's pretty much going to be the consensus of everybody. Um, you might get some people that say Notre Dame, but Alabama's probably the team that needs to be there. Shocking to me, he has Clemson at number two with that loss. Uh, not Must not be putting a lot of... Not putting much in that with uh, Trevor Lawrence not being there. I don't know that the committee's going to do that, but hey, I like where he's at. I think Clemson probably is the second best team, um, but I don't think that's where the committee's going to go with that. Uh, third, he has Ohio State. Probably going to be where a lot of people have them. Um, that'll be the interesting thing. Where do they get ranked? I think that's probably where they're going to end up. Uh, number four. He has Florida. Uh, Florida been putting on a show lately. Um, they got one loss. They got some more time to prove themselves. They'll end up probably going to be in that matchup with Alabama in the SEC championship game if everything keeps going the way it should go. At number five, he has Notre Dame, um, which is interesting. They have the best win of... Uh, Probably all the college football teams. Granted, Trevor Lawrence didn't play in that game, but Notre Dame, it was a home game. Notre Dame still won, got them at fifth. And at number six, Cincinnati. That's going to be the interesting thing is where Cincinnati ends up. Um, I think six is probably a good spot. That's probably kind of where I have them too. Um, I, th I think they're going to be ranked above BYU, so it's going to be close into there. So uh, all in all, I'm not, I mean, his picks are okay. Um, obviously, he's not here to defend himself. So uh, let's get rid of his, and then we'll put my uh, slightly less shitty picks up there. I guess we'll, we'll call it that. I have final edit on that. So his picks are shitty. Mine are slightly less shitty. Uh, number one, I have Alabama. Again, you know, it's Alabama. They're probably going to be number one. I think everybody probably agrees with that. At number two, I have Notre Dame. They have the best win of the season. It's the first rankings. Probably where they're going to end up being. Um, you know, that stuff's going to play itself out. Everything stays on track. They're going to play Clemson again with Trevor Lawrence on a neutral site. We'll, we'll see how that shakes out. At three, I have Ohio State. Again, I think that's probably where everybody's going to have them. Unless the committee doesn't think four games is enough, they might have them a little further back. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, Ohio State's not really going to have a marquee win on their schedule. Um, you know, they've got, you know, a Big Ten championship game, maybe Northwestern, by the way it's looking. Um, who knows? But at the end of the day, if they don't have any more of their games canceled and Ohio State goes undefeated and ends up as a 7-0 and Big Ten champion, I find it hard to believe that they're not going to be in the playoffs. I, I just I think that's where it's going to end up. At number four, I have Clemson. Um, I have them listed as the best one-loss team. 
Their one loss was without their quarterback. They get a chance to avenge that loss if everything plays out. And the committee kind of, I don't know, in last year's, they seem to reward that. If you can come back and avenge your loss, it seems like something they're impressed with. So, you know, hopefully that goes out and hopefully we get that matchup and we get to see Clemson at full strength against Notre Dame for a second time. Um, be interested to see that matchup again. At number five, I have Florida. And they're, they're right behind Clemson. Um, Florida's got games to prove themselves still. You know, I think they can work themselves into the top four. It's going to be tough. You know, they can't lose again. I mean, they got to run the board. That's just kind of in the position that they're in right now. And at number six, I have Cincinnati. Um, I like Cincinnati. Maybe a little bit of bias on my uh, on the podcast before the college football season even started. Actually, before we even started getting, before that whole Big Ten fiasco when they canceled and the Pac-12 canceled and all that horse shit. Um, had them making the college football playoff because I thought if there was ever going to be a year that a non-Power 5 school gets in, it would be this year, and Cincinnati was my pick. Although, you know, BYU's making that run too. They're probably in that seven range for me. But, uh, boy, I'd like to see those two teams play each other. But now can Cincinnati hang with the, with the Alabamas and the Clemsons? I don't know. But uh, for one game, the way, uh, the way they're coached and the way it's done, they went, they've won some close games. They've been tested. You know, it'd be interesting. Can they, can they scheme it out for one game and, and get a win? Hey, that's possible. But, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this ranking doesn't matter because we're going to have, you know, four or five more before the final ones come out. But it's, interest, it's always interesting to see the first one just to see where they where they weigh everybody at. Um, I think the the most interesting things is where where are they going to put Clemson with the one loss? Where are they going to put Florida with the one loss? And where do they put Ohio State with only having four games under their belt? And then I'll, obviously, you know, if if Cincinnati's not in the top six, is that kind of saying they don't even have a chance? Probably. Um, you know, that on the outside looking in anyways, as far as Cincinnati's concerned, I think they need some chaos to happen up top. I think you need a couple teams to have a, some, some bad losses. But that's the way it goes. You know, it'd be, it'd be interesting. I'd like to see a, uh, you know, a non-power team get in there if they, if they get a chance to see what they got. Um, I'm sure as most, I would say as most people, this would have been the perfect year for me to see, you know, it, it expanded maybe six or eight teams. You give that first team a buy, you know, the first two schools buy if he went to six teams. Uh, eight teams probably would have been perfect. And, and it would have gave you, could have pushed the championship game and stuff back into February and gave yourself a little more buffer. Um, I still just don't understand why they're so, with the times that we're going in right now with all these delays and cancellations and, and proper per, uh, protocols that are going into place, trying to keep everybody safe, keep everybody healthy. I still don't understand why they're on such a hard timeline of, we got to be done by then. We got to be done by then. I mean, the NFL even came out and uh, with an option to add an eighth playoff team to each conference. If, if they happen to have some cancellations to kind of counteract, that and get a couple more teams, you know, get some more teams in the playoffs, get, you know, kind of shake it out a little more fairly. Um, but college football, they've, they've always just operated weird of these manufactured deadlines. Like they, you know, well, we got to get it done by this time. Nobody knows why I, I've yet to hear any reasoning why they have to be done by these times. And if you're really going to say it's well, cause we got to get exams and stuff taken care of. Okay. I mean, it, you know, I think a lot of people are beyond the believing of the student athlete that you care so much about, or, you, you know, it's, it's more revenue based, I think these days. And for these kids to get a better chance on that stage to try to further their career, because for the most of them, they're trying to make it to the next level. And that is their career path of choice. So, uh, 
would have been nice to see that get in there, maybe give the power conferences, get eight teams in, give the power conferences each their champion in. That's five. Then you have three at-large bids. Gets you a Notre Dame, maybe gets you a Cincinnati. Uh, the SEC maybe gets a second school in with Florida, depending on how that would go. Um, I think that'd be a better look. And that would, uh, I think, would work better than than the way it's going now, because I think we're still going to get some cancellations. And if Ohio State gets another game canceled, are you going to put them in if they end up only playing six games? I don't know. Now, it tells me if they're undefeated and if they start looking at, you know, what it's going to do on television, yeah, Ohio State probably going to get in. Um, that's just, that's the brand that they are, and that's just kind of the way it rolls. So, you know, this year would have been the year to have eight teams. Probably would have been a little better. But there you go. Wide side sports, shitty playoff projections. Wide side?